Hi, welcome back. Right now, what we would do is we'll have a look at all of these uh, um, features of Hive. We'll look at Hive data formats, creating tables, Hive managed tables, loading data into Hive, simplifying queries with views, uh, storing query results, accessing data. Then we'll look at query performance. Uh, in query, how to improve the performance of a query. For that, there are various techniques. Uh, you might have seen an SQL, uh, PLSQL, that you partition tables, uh, you index uh, tables. Then uh, we'll also have a look at views, and uh, we'll also have a look at uh, various user-defined functions. I'll do a couple of them for you. Uh, these are because these are purely Java-based functions. Uh, in this, what we would do is we'll create our own functions and we'll hook these functions into Hive, uh, into the Hive framework so that we can use it with our queries. Now, because this is very heavily Java centric, I'll be doing a couple of uh, uh, functions, very simple functions, and the rest uh, for uh, more advanced stuff, probably you can research and do a bit more. Okay. So all of these uh, queries, all of these points that I'm going to cover, they may not be in uh, the same order. Okay. I have mixed and matched it, and wherever possible, I've, said, uh, I've given uh, you some uh, hints uh, which will optimize your queries, uh, which will uh, give you an idea of how to uh, partition uh, the table or how to bucket the table and various other concepts. Okay, so let's move on. All right. What I've, as, as in the previous session, I have created a script file for you. Whatever uh, commands or whatever uh, Hive scripts I'm going to use, I'm going to paste it in this one, in this file, and I'll send this, uh, and uh, this file will be available for you uh, to practice later on, okay? Right, so as usual, I've been into Genie, uh, gone into module three, okay? I'll just do a ls in here. So there are quite a few files which I've put in there. These are data files, okay? And uh, these are the files that I'll use to uh, show you a few examples. Now all these files again will be made available to you along with this presentation. Okay, so what's the first thing that I do? I get into Hive. Right. In the previous class we saw uh, uh, we saw hue and we saw HDFS name node and how data is stored. Okay, so let's get into user Hive and warehouse. Okay, in warehouse we created all of these uh, tables last time and if you look at Hue, uh, Hue the meta manager, the meta store manager will list out all the tables that you have, all the schema definitions that you have. Okay, so obviously it is not showing it right now but as I said I had a problem before but that shouldn't stop us from doing anything else. Say show tables. Okay. Now, if you look at show tables, last time I showed you what's the meaning of a managed table or a self-managed table. Let's have a look at one of the tables. Say describe extended uh, DEPT, department table. Okay. So, when I did a describe extended department table, this is what I asked you to watch for. Table type is a managed table, okay, right? And uh, the location is under warehouse and how did I create this table? I did a, a create table, table name, and I gave all of these uh, uh, parameters in there. So uh, all of these uh, columns in there, right? So that was the location and that was the type of table. Now what we also saw, I was if you look at department and department has got department dot that right now when I said drop table department what happened was along with the department schema <coughs> from the meta store says show tables you won't have department now if you look at this there is no department now along with this uh, schema information the data in here was also dropped so department doesn't exist 
Now, as we see that uh, this is a major uh, problem. Okay, so when it is a managed table, we are allowing Hive to manage the content and the schema, the data and the schema. Now, this is good only when uh, your data is temporary or you know fully well that no one else is using the data. Okay, now what happens when the data is present in a different location or this data is used by some other person. Uh, as I explained in the previous class, this data could be used by uh, someone who is writing a MapReduce program or someone who is writing a pig program, pig Latin script. Uh, in that case, if you drop this table, all the data is deleted. So this is a issue that we need to deal with. Uh, fortunately, Hive has provided us uh, with something called an external table. Okay, so it is called as an external table. So let's create an external table. So I'll say uh, first and foremost, before I create an external table, what I would like you to do is create a folder where we will ingest this data. Okay, so I'll say uh, in uh, HDFS create a folder say hyphen mkdir I create a folder uh, called books okay HDFS DFS hyphen mkdir create a folder in this location slash user slash hive slash data slash books so if you look at uh, this folder now uh, hive under hive I have created a folder called data and under data I have created a uh, another folder called books okay so what I need to do now is I need to ingest some data under that folder called books okay so If you look at this file, I've got a file called file.txt, which is again a file downloaded from Gutenberg, okay, website. So let me ingest this data. Copy from local, I'll say file1.txt, okay. And where do I want to copy? User slash hive slash data slash books. Okay, I'll copy it into this location. Now let's check if this data is here. So HDFS DFS hyphen ls slash user slash So if you look at that file.txt was listed. Now this is just a particular location inside HDFS. Okay, a location inside HDFS. Now if you go there, so that's a location inside HDFS. This is the location. Right. Now what we need to do is we need to create a table. Okay, and this file.txt looks like this. So we are going to do a word count again. Okay. So what we are going to do right now is we are going to create a table and we are going to point this schema location to that particular data location. Okay. So let's do that. So let me create a table called random books. Okay. So I, I have the syntax here. Copy. Paste. Now if you look at the syntax closely. There is an extra word here called external table means this table even though I have created this table the data location is not the default location. The default location would be under warehouse okay and this the table would manage it under this folder. So right now what I am saying is create I am creating the schema okay and I am saying okay this schema points to this particular location. Now this particular location has already got the data file called file.txt. So let me do that. Okay. Now just to make sure I'll say describe extended uh, 
random. So if you look at that, it's an external table and the location right now is this hive slash data slash books and not like this before where it was under warehouse slash department and that was hive managed. Okay. So let's do a little select count of from random books, random book. So obviously a map reduced job will be done and uh, the fields are terminated by space here. Uh, so a tab terminated and every line will be tokenized and those words will be counted. So it will give us a count of what the number of words that are in that particular file. So that's the file under data, under books and that's the file. Okay. So they will be broken down like this by tokens. Okay. Right. There were 2920 uh, words. Now what's next? Let me drop this table. Drop table random book. Okay. So when I drop the table random book, uh, let me do this first show tables. So I have random book table. Now I'll say drop table random book. Now I'll do a show tables again. There is no table random book present here. But if we look at the file in the HDFS system here, the file should be present. See the file.txt was present. So the data was not dropped. The data is still here. I'll do a refresh. The data is still here. Books, data. So this is the difference between an external table and a managed table. In a managed table, if you drop the table along with the metadata, meta information, uh, that is the table information, along with that, even the data is dropped. Whereas in an external table, because we provide the location to that external table, the, met, uh, the data is not dropped, only the meta information is dropped. Now, what is the use case? The use case, as I said, if a few people are working on the same data, uh, then uh, you need to use external table. Or if it is just temporary data, then you use managed table. So that's the difference between an external table and a managed table. Okay. 